this in the afternoon. BBC Radio Kent. I've stayed up at the um, the little guest house on the cliffs there. I, uh, it was called, I think it was the Dutch House. Oh, the Dutch House, yes, at North Falling, yes. Yeah, and uh, on mm-hmm. frequently on occasions, uh, we've had to draw the curtains and then draw the other curtains because... Uh, the flash of the lights can uh, can keep you awake at night, mm-hmm. can't it? Yes. But but yes. it's never mind us in in our beds. It's the uh, the people out at sea you have to look after, don't you? That's right. Yeah. 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 You must be um, in one of the busiest sea lanes in the world. Oh yes, we are. Yes, yes, because you see, we bring them all in and out of the English Channel, up and down the North Sea, and in and out of the Thames Estuary. So once they've passed you, they turn left or turn right, That's depending right, on which yes, direction. Okay. Yes. How wide is the sea channel that they're actually navigating through at that point? Um, well, from North Falland across to Cap Grenade, it's about 30 miles. Not very wide, is it? No, because in the middle of that, you've got the Goodwin Sands. Mm. But it's like a big crossroads as well, isn't it? Oh, With it all is, the yes. ferries going backwards yes. and forwards as well. Yeah. Yes. Does that ever worry you at all, you know, the, the amount of traffic that is using that seaway uh well you've always got the thought that there could be an accident mm. but um it's pretty well regulated they have to keep to their correct uh, lanes going through the channel um they're monitored by the coast guards well i was going to say that because it's not just you it's the coast guards as well is it just those two authorities yourself and the coast guards who actually make sure everything is is running all right yes yeah. Yeah. How yes. how do you 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 said uh, across to Cap Grenet. So how do you actually work hand in hand with the um, the lighthouses uh, on the other side, as it were? Well, they they have their their service, and they they've got the same type of service as what we've got. We don't um, have any connection with them, but you know their their um, lights are operated in the, on the same principle as what ours are. So there is no international organisation then as such? Not really, no, no. Mm. No, each country's got its own lighthouse authority. Did you see that um, fascinating programme with Alan Wicker in Australia where uh, he was talking to a lighthouse keeper there who I think was looking after the South Australian Ocean and Indian Ocean? Mm. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> At one point. Uh, and, and I, I wondered whether you actually looked out and you could sort of differentiate and say, well, that side is the North Sea and that side is the English Channel and... Yeah, we, we, we do that because we do sort of separate the, the two. Um, the English Channel is on the right-hand side of us and the North Sea is on the left-hand. Mm, yeah. As they come out of the Thames Estuary and turn to come down to the Channel, they're, they're then coming into the, into the English Channel, you see. Is a land-based lighthouse manned in a different way from uh, something that's out of sea? Oh, yes. Yes, on a land-based one, we're there um, all the year round, apart from our annual leave but uh, there's always a keeper on duty, and the majority of stations, all the keepers live on the station with their families. Yeah. Well, tell us about your family. Um, yes, my wife lives there with me. I've got three sons. Um, none of them joined the service. Um, the eldest one, he's got a restaurant in Deal. Um, the middle one, he um, does kitchens. He sells kitchens and um, bathrooms. Mm-hmm. And the young one is a roofer. So, so none of them are, have entered the, the service. But as you say, no. it's a shrinking Oh, yes, it's a, it's a dying trade, yes, yes. unfortunately. Did, did you start out? Was that your first job? No. Um, my first job was a butcher. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Yes. So, so, but you were pointed in the direction, really, by your family, presumably. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And do you think this will be your last station? Oh, yes. Yes, I've got about two and a half years to go now. Mm-hmm. So I don't really want to move. Um, you know the family the eldest lad he lives in um, Margate the young one is in um, Ramsgate and the middle one is in Colchester mm. so they're all in that area and I don't want to move you know we should retire to that area although both my wife and myself are Cornish mm. oh really mm-hmm. yeah. yeah but traditionally um, lighthouses are white and I think the North Foreland lighthouse is white isn't it, it? is yeah. so does that mean to d- say that you have to do a lot of painting no no, fortunately. Uh, we, we have our own um, direct labour force who go around painting them and maintaining them. So some of them um, have got a white, uh, a white tower with perhaps a red band or a black band. They use them for day marches, eh? Mm. So that's... Um, they're, they're painted so they stand out. 
and ships can take bearings from them during the day. And say what they are mm. by the markings on them. That's right, yes. It's all marked on their charts and, and in the nautical almanacs they carry. Yeah. Mm. Are, are some lighthouses taller than others? Oh, yes, yeah. The average light is about 200 feet above sea level. See, if you go too high, uh, you stand a chance of the light getting capped by low cloud and fog. Mm. And there was an instance with Beachy Head. When they built that, first of all, it was up on top of the cliff. Well, I was thinking about that. You know, you wouldn't need a lighthouse if you actually had the light up on top of the cliff. But uh, there must have been the reason for it. Yeah. Well, they had it up there, um, you know, with, with the character, etc. But shipping reported what, it. What's the character? It. Well, the, the, the number of flashes. Yes. The timing of it, mm. and the number of flashes you give, um, which identifies the station. But it was, it was perched up on top of the cliff, 400 foot up, you see, and they couldn't see it. So in the end, they dismantled it and or rebuilt one down on the rocks at the bottom of the cliff. Ah, the story. We're getting it all now, aren't we? Mm. Uh, you, you mentioned about the character. You can't have that many different characters, can you? Are, are they well, repeated no, in you, various you, parts? You don't, you don't get two in the, in the same area with the same character, so there's no chance of mistaking one from the other. I mean, ours is a group flash five every 20 seconds. You may get another one down on the Cornish coast with the same character, or perhaps up on the, the, the Welsh coast, but you never get them in the same area. Hmm. Otherwise, you know, the ships would look and say, well, which one is it, you know? What happens if, um, and heaven forbid it should happen, but what happens if the, li the, the light breaks down? Well, if you've got a complete failure, then a navigation warning is broadcast to shipping, telling you that the station is out of operation. Hmm. Has it ever happened to you? Uh, not completely, no. No, we've got, uh, we're, we're mains operated, we've got the public supply. Uh, if the mains fails, then our standby generator automatically starts up. And if that should fail, then we've got an acetylene gas light, mm. which they're in the throes of removing. They're putting a new lamp changer in, and the standby lamp will then become a battery-operated one. Mm. You sound as though you've been um, enjoying your life. Oh, I have, yes. As a yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You could recommend it. If, if there was a career structure, you could recommend it, could you? Oh, yes, I would, yes. <laughs> yeah. To the right type of lad. <laughs> to, the, to the right type Obviously, of lad. Obviously, yes, yes, yes yeah. Right. But no, I've, I've, as you know, I've done 44 years and I do it all again. What are you going to do? I mean, when, when, do you, when does your retirement come up? Um, well, about two and a half years. What are you going to do, Jim? Not a lot, I don't expect. <laughs> <laughs> so if I can take it easy, write my memoirs, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll have to vacate the, the house you're living in. Yes, yeah. yes. But yeah. you obviously won't get, go away from, from the edge of the water. Um, I would or like will to, you? Uh, well, I, I would like to think I could stay within sight of the sea, but no, I don't expect so. Mm. Um, no, I expect we shall, we shall go inland. Do you like sailing? Are you a good sailor? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, we, we enjoy going over on the, the Sally Line from Ramsgate to Dunkirk, you know. Mm. We very often have a non-landing trip on that. But when you come back, do you sort of look out over the rail and see all the lights flashing? Oh, yes. Which ones yes, they are? Pick them out, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> that, is, holiday, that, <laughs> <laughs> that is one time that um, I can pick out my my home from sea. You know, I can look out and say, well, there you are, there's my house over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific, and it's all working well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been smashing talking to you, Jim, and, uh, and we, well, we know that you'll keep the North Foreland Lighthouse uh, going. And, and thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. OK, fine. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's uh, Jim Bowling, the principal keeper of the North Foreland Lighthouse in our Canterbury studio this afternoon. Been a keeper for 44 years and it's been a joy to talk to him.